All right, so in the week four folder, build an atom FET. Go to my document. And it should load. Okay, so to get started, I want you guys to uh, take care of these things right here. All right, so it should be open the simulator, click on the atom option, click on the net charge and mass number. So if I click on this and open it up, all right, build an atom is going to be the first thing right here. Click on that. And this is what you should see. So what it says to do is click on net charge and mass number. And this is what should be going on. So again, Schoology, week four folder, Adam simulation, P-H-E-T, open the document, Follow the link, and then you should have two tabs open. You should have this one with the atoms in it. You have the protons, the neutrons, and the electrons at the bottom. And then you should have this open too. All right. Once you are once you are there, and you have your uh, Adam's paper open and your build an Adam simulation open, uh, put done in the chat. So I know you're done. All right, a few more people are there. So while you guys get there, I'm gonna kind of explain the whole purpose of this and give people some more time to get there. So <clears throat> earlier this week, we had got our introduction to atoms and subatomic particles. So the reason that we learn about atoms in science is because they make up everything. Anything you touch today, anything you breathe in today, basically everything you look at today has atoms in it somewhere. So whether that's the, uh, the air that you're breathing, there's oxygen and nitrogen. If you're uh, typing on the keyboard, that's a plastic. Plastics are, are long, um, complex molecules which are made up of atoms. Uh, everything you interact with today is atoms. So the reason we learned about that is because they're the building blocks of life and we're going to uh, kind of break them down and learn what makes them different today. And the simulation is a visual understanding of how they look uh, and where these particles go. That's the whole point of today is to give you a visualization of it. And if you can follow directions today, like reading directions, then you should be good to go. A reminder, I'm not going to type out many answers on here. I will say them out loud, but uh, what I've noticed is that people just wait for me to type in the answers, and then they're like, hey, man, can you scroll down a little bit? And then just take a screenshot and copy and type everything in, and they don't pay attention. So pay attention. Moral of that story. Okay? So um, you should be in this first part. If at also at any point, if you think, all right, man, I got this, this is easy. I'm just, you can move on. You can go ahead of me, okay? Because I am gonna have certain breaks throughout um, the class for you to uh, work on different sections because again, it would take too long for me to explain each problem one at a time. And plus, I think you guys are smarter than that. So I'm gonna kind of show you the ropes and then let you go and then we're going to talk about like the main topics and the main uh, ideas of it later just to make sure you guys are all on the same page so with that in mind uh, I'm gonna need some good participation today so uh, I understand that a lot of you guys are typing and, and in the document and it's kind of annoying to switch back and forth so if you just wanna uh, throw your uh, microphone on and say the answer instead of typing it in the chat that's fine too uh, just 
the only thing I'm going to need from you in the chat is just basically to let me know that you're done uh, with certain parts so we can move on. So first up, you're going to do this drag and drop the protons, neutrons, and electrons. So how this works is like you'll have questions like this. And then the questions underneath are related to those ones. Questions like this, the questions underneath here are related to those questions. OK, so it says add a proton. OK, if you drag and drop a proton and it's in the right spot, it'll stick. All right, where does it go is where you need to pay attention. Okay, and the two answers that you could possibly have are either the nucleus, which is the center of the atom. The nucleus is the center part of the atom where this X is, or it could go in the orbits, which are these outer rings. So if you drag and drop it, if it goes to the right spot, it'll stick. If you try to put it in the wrong spot, it'll float back. Okay, so if I put it in the wrong spot, it'll float away. So if it's in the right spot, it should stick and, and stay there. So you can see, based on my screen, that when I dropped a proton in there, it went to the nucleus. Then the neutron also went in the nucleus, and the electron went in the nucleus. So you type that, I'm sorry, I lied. The electrons went in the orbit. So what you put down here is where did it go? It went in the nucleus. Where did this one go? It went in the nucleus. The electron, where did it go? It was in the orbits. So that's how you answer the first three questions. And you're going to do the same type of stuff down here. So then based on those three questions, answer these ones. So what subatomic particles were then in the nucleus? Which ones are found in the orbits? Look at these three questions up here, because if you answer these three, then it'll help you answer all this stuff down here. And you can find out what element you made by looking at the red word that pops up in the middle. So this is a hydrogen. One proton, one neutron, and one electron is hydrogen. Okay, how'd that go? You guys doing okay? Does that make sense? Yes. All right, did I lose anybody? Okay, I'm gonna need you to uh, inform me if you're behind because I wanna keep moving to give you guys time to work on this, but I don't want to lose anybody that's really, really lost. All right, if you're good, we'll keep it moving. So then you're going to add a proton, a neutron, and an electron. Now, I, when you do this, you need to pay attention to three things. One, the name of the atom. Two, the net charge. And three, the mass number. Those are the three things you need to pay attention to when you add each particle. So for example, it says add a proton. There are multiple things that changed. So when I added this proton, the name changed, the charge changed, 
and the mass number changed. Okay, so look, watch all those three. Think, think when I drop an atom and uh, a proton in there, watch all three of those things change at the same time. The element, net charge, and mass. So that's what you would put down. Element, net charge, and mass all changed when you put added a proton. So make sure that goes here. So when you added a proton, the element those three things changed. Because a proton is positive. A positive charge will change the charge of the atom. And remember we talked about earlier this week that the protons are the, the identity of the atom. That's what changes what every atom is. It's the difference between oxygen and fluorine and carbon and nitrogen and a bunch of different other ones is just adding protons. It also has a positive charge, because remember, proton, P, positive. And since it's in the nucleus, the nucleus makes up the mass of the atom. So everything inside the nucleus gives the atom its mass. The neutrons don't have a charge, if you remember. They don't have a charge, so they're not going to affect the net charge. So when I go in and drag this in here, nothing. The only thing that changes is the mass number. Because neutrons act as a buffer between protons, just so that they don't repel each other. But they do weigh about the same as a proton. So they're going to give your element mass. But it's not going to change the charge. So here, you're going to say that what changes? The mass was the only thing that changed, is what you would put here. When I add another electron, okay, the only thing that's changing is the charge. If you watch this box right here, so remember we talked about ions, they're charged particles. Ions are charged particles. So right now, this one has a plus one charge because it has two positive protons, but only one negative electron. When you add another electron, now you have two of each, so it's balanced. Now, one thing that's misleading about this simulation is that the protons, neutrons, and electrons, they all look about the same size. If you look closely, it's a little noticeable that the electrons are a little bit smaller, but in real life, for real, the electrons are way tinier than the protons and neutrons. The electrons are so small that their mass is ignored, meaning that when you add as many of these as you want, it's not gonna, you're never gonna change the mass because the mass only depends on the protons and the neutrons. So go back here. And you'll type in here, the charge changed. And that's it. Then you're going to use these, the answers you have for these three, to answer these down here. So that would be what particle response will determine the identity. When you went up here, so look at what you listed here in your observations. Which ones changed the element? That's your answer. So the next question, which one's responsible for determining the mass? Which two of these three changed the mass? And then finally, which one changed the charge? Look up here for your observations. Which one of those talked about changing the charge? Okay, which one would you say changed the charge? And then you'd list those down here. And then that's the end of part one.
All right, so I'm gonna give you guys about 10 minutes to finish part one. You guys should be about halfway done with it if you're following along. I know I touched on these things, but didn't fill them in. If you have any questions, put them in the chat. And then in about 10 minutes, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how to do part two. Like I said, again, if you figured this out and you are cruising, you can keep going. You don't have to wait for me. All right, but I'm gonna come back in about 10 minutes and start number two. If you have any questions, put them in the chat. Please be working on this. I will be checking. I can see whether you started the assignment or not on Schoology. So if you're just sitting there with your mic off, just chilling, you shouldn't be. I want to have to call you out. So please, do what you're supposed to do. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you guys about the screenshot part here. So what you do is, first of all, you follow the directions that are stated here. All right, so it, it should say um, what to do. So first it says add five protons. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to reset, make sure I can see these. And then it'll say add five. So one proton two protons, three protons, four protons, five protons. Then it says add six neutrons. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now five electrons, one, two, three, four, five. All right, so here's my atom. And here I can put, all right, how many protons did I have? It says right here. So five. Neutrons is six, it says right here. And my electrons is five, it says right here. So what element is this? If you look, it says right here. So don't be a boron. Look at it. Ha, 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 ha. All right, boron, B-O-R-O-N is the element. Now, for the diagram part, this involves taking a screenshot. I'm going to show you two ways to do it. All right, and I'm going to need to share my entire screen for that. So um, let me switch that up. check to make sure I'm doing it right. All right. So first up, I'm going to go here. And this is the screenshot that I want to take is right here. So the first thing you can do is what I taught you in the lab safety simulation, where you hit the Windows key. So that's the white square in the bottom left corner of your keyboard. And then type SNP, S-N-I-P. Is one way to do it. Uh, from what I've heard from a lot of students is that as soon as you uh, hit that Windows button, then it, it, you can see it right away. It says snipping tool. You don't even have to type. But if you do, snipping tool right there. And it'll open up this little white window. You're going to click New, and your screen should go gray. When your screen goes gray, you should see little crosshairs, and you're going to click and drag this red square to capture the entire atom. 
when you release your click, it's going to immediately pop up in this box here. You're going to want to go to the top center where it says copy. So in between the save and the send is one that says copy. Click on it. Now when you click on it, it you're not going to see anything. So click on it, and it's, it's going to copy it to your clipboard. And you're going to come back to your other tab, and right where it says diagram, you're going to paste it. Paste. OK? If you've done that correctly, your diagram will be right there. Let's see. Now I can see it's a little boron. One, two, three, four, five electrons. And that's the exact picture I just took. So that's what you're going to do for all of them. The second method I think is a little simpler is to hold down the Windows button on your keyboard, hold down the Shift key on your keyboard, and then hit S one time. Your screen will go gray again, and you're going to have the crosshairs pop up. That's called a shortcut. It's a key. It's a pattern of keystrokes that will uh, launch a program. When you click and drag, it does the same thing. But here's what I like about it. When you release that screenshot, it automatically copies it to your clipboard, like it says down here in the corner. So you don't have to do the whole copy thing. It's already it's already in your clipboard. And you can go back to your assignment, and where it says diagram, hit Control V for paste, and paste it. Boom, right there. So those are the two ways of uh, doing these screenshots and submitting them. All right, because you're just going to paste them here, there, there, and there, and you're going to follow the instructions that it says over here. For part three, you just, again, follow the instructions and then fill in the boxes here. And that should be it. So I'll let you guys uh, work. And I will be here to answer questions if you have them. So please. Don't hesitate to answer or ask questions. That's what I'm here for. I want to help. But I'm going to give you the rest of this time to continue to work on it. If you need to finish it, um, remember I have office hours from 11 to 11.50 today. So if you need help, come to my office hours and get it. Uh, I can help you show anything that you're missing or may need to work on. That is the time to do it. Um, Secondly, uh, this is due uh, next class period, so make sure you turn it in, or I'll have to put a missing symbol in there, which automatically goes to a zero, but you can still turn it in. All right, so stay on top of this, excuse me, assignment. Finally, remember, we don't have school on Monday. So at the teacher day, we are going to be figuring out what this whole remote learning thing, is, I mean, uh, in-person learning thing is going to look like when you guys come back. So. You guys do not have class on Monday, so I will see you on Tuesday. If you have any questions, stick around, throw them in the chat. But if not, enjoy your weekend, and I'll see you next week.